Korau ki a ngā tikorau e tika ana ki a mihia. No reira haramai koe e hika. Haramai e te uri o hikorangi maunga e ki ana e kore e neke ne. Haramai e te uri o wai apu wawa e ki ana, wai apu whenu, wai apu tangata. Nau mai piki mai, nau mai kake mai e te uri o porauurangi. O ngā tikorau e ki ana, ngā tikorau whano ke he iwi moke. Nō reira nau piki mai, nau kake mai, nau mai meo pūke ngā meo wānanga, ari ki tia ki mua i te aro aro o te hunga nei, kia mua hio ai rātou i te mahi rangatira, i mahi ai e kō tau o te kāinga i tēnei wā tonu ne. Nō reira, tēnei rā te mihi atiki a koe, o tīra ki a tātou e hika mā homa i te paki paki o pānapa e a. recording. Tēnei te mihi aroha ki a tātou i tai mai, kei raro a te whare nei. Kaupapa o ennei rā, te mihi a whakatupu ngā whānau whānui o ngā haue whā tēnā tātou. Ko hikurangi te maunga, ko waiopu, ko tapu airo ngā awa, Ko nuku tai memeha, te waka, ko ue pōhatu, te iwi, ko te whānau a hine tāpora, te hapu, ko au te uri a Māui, ko au te uri a hine tāpora, ko au te uri o te whānau a taumānu, ko panapa e hau a hau. Kia ora tātou. Kia ora tātou. It's uh, uh, it's quite surreal um, being uh, being up here tonight. I I was just having a corridor earlier on. Um, I've uh, got my fourth child due in about a month, and I pretty much don't have a pass to go anywhere at the moment. Um, and asked why was it that I made this space to come up here? I couldn't actually give an answer to that. Um, and a lot of what we do, or a lot of the things that guide. The mahi that we do is, is wairua based and I, I was just told to come so here I am standing in front of here um, waiting for dinner to be served. <laughs> um, so looking at the kaupapa of, of, of why um, Everyone's been brought together over these two days. We only have the experience that we have back the coast from, we only have our own experience. So none of, I guess, what um, I, I offer or I share is, a, uh, is given as a, this is a solution for, for everybody. This is our own experience that we're going through for the needs that we, that we have as a, as a people. Um, one of the things that that we find uh, rings true is that nobody has the solutions that we need apart from us. We are the only ones who have the solutions for the issues that have been created for us and by us, um, uh, by our tūpuna. Now, like the bow of any waka, um, that can be quite a daunting place when you're standing um, right, at, right at the tip of, of a journey. But to know that you have uh, everything behind you including your tūpuna, your whānau, gives you that courage to, to move forward. Um, so yeah, while, while it can be challenging, there's, there's some beauty in, um, in knowing that you've got your people behind you. <coughs> so, uh, I'll give a little bit of a um, whakapapa to Hikarangi Enterprises. So Hikarangi was, we, we've really still only got our training wheels on. We're, we're an organisation that's about three years old. It was 2015 that the tunnel was put out by one of our hapu trusts. That, ha that hapu trust in particular focuses on cultural and environmental kaupapa. Now we all know as, in the, as Māori and Te Ao Māori that you can't do one thing without everything else being attached to it. You can't just go, oh we're going to do economic development and uh, it'll, it'll exist in its own silo. But what we did, what was recognised was that we... Politics exists, um, 
iwi politics, hapu politics, marae politics exists, and it can slow things down. And in an economic space, you really need to be able to make quick decisions. Otherwise, it's really hard to move. So we put the tono out, uh, and our first hui was had, and we had 20 people that turned up. Uh, we had our, had our hui hui, um, put the tono out for the next one. We had 12 people turn up, and by the third hui, we had five people left. No, we, we better do something, otherwise there's going to be no one eating the sandwiches at the, at the next hui. <laughs> so those five people became the uh, directors of uh, Hikarangi Enterprises. broken. <laughs> um, so we were, and it just so happened that across the geographical area of, of Ruatoria, or a population of about six to 800 people, um, that we had those five people came from across a geographical area. So pretty much two stone throws that way and two stone throws that way. We had five people that encompassed that, um, that area. None of us had really, we'd, we'd been in the social and econo oh, sorry, social and um, the social space for lifting the well-being of people across different areas. Uh, but none of us had really been into the, into the economic um, space uh, too to do. Like that hadn't been our, our, our um, training or our breeding ground. So what we did was that we went out to our people and asked what, what would it look like for economic development to happen on the coast. And so we went to all the people that were either providing jobs or wanted or had great ideas that wanted to get into employment or create jobs because the research shows is that if you increase the household income, you increase the well-being of your people. Now it's not saying that's the only factor, but it's one. And so how did we do that? how would we do that? Now the big thing that came back was that we are people that love doing the do. We love getting dirt under the fingernails. We love getting out into the fields or in the shearing shed, shed and sweating, getting the mahi done. But actually some of the hardest stuff is the behind the scenes stuff. It's that stuff that why most uh, new businesses fail within 18 months because of that support system that doesn't, that doesn't sit behind it. So we knew that we needed to create support for our um, for our whanau. Now, like most rural Māori uh, settings, primary industry, the primary uh, the primary space is where most of our uh, income comes from from and for our whenua. So up at home, we have dry stock, we have cattle. Um, we have sheep, although that's in the decline. We've got heaps of pine trees, although heaps of them ended up down in Tolliver Bay um, about a month ago. Um, and we have, we used to have maize, but the, the bottom end has fallen out of that. And we have honey. But it's all primary industry. You grow it once and you send it away. So you may take one cut from it. Um, the honey space is a little bit different than that. There's been a lot of, uh, uh, something like 200 New Zealand entities or companies that are trying to do their own thing, um, but most of, the, most of the income generated back home is, uh, is through the primary industry space. Now, these aren't my words, but this is what was given to me um, at a conference around hemp last, last week, was that you have a Māori, with land, Māori, with Māori land, you don't own the land. So if you're going to do business, it has to be really profitable because you can't live off the capital gains over time. <coughs> Where the majority of land use in New Zealand is you run your business, you don't pay taxes because your accountants are really good at doing that stuff. <laughs> you reinvest it back into, into your, your capital base and then you retire or sell it and you live off the capital gains. Now as Māori, we can't do that. We have to be a lot sharper in the mahi that we do with the whenua we also, we also feel the negative impacts if we do negative by the whenua. So for us back home, our people are unwell because our whenua is unwell. Our whenua has been, our tūpuna cleared the whenua and we went into farming. Now back on the east coast we've got young geology and literally the whenua is being washed away out to sea. We have the highest sediment flow in the Waiofu 
Hawa and the whole southern hemisphere. What does that look like for our future generations? Well, it looks like a lot of mahi to undo the things of our tūpuna. Now, that's not standing on the mana of our tūpuna. Our tūpuna have, have provided pathways for us to be here we are, where we are now. So one of the things that we started to do was, well, what we did was we got some objectivised to come in because we are ingrained in having cows and um, more recently having pine trees on our land. So we got um, an agronomist and a... Uh, economic development, well, we've got two tāne from the top of uh, the South Island, um, Pākehā, and we're in the twilight of the years. They were semi-retired, trying to retire, didn't really want to retire. And we got them, um, we got them to come up through some contacts and said, what do you see? Because when you live in a place, you only see the things that are just here. And they came up and they said, we see lots of kānuka. And we look around and pretty much most of the hills that aren't in pine or uh, in farming or in kānuka. Now we see it every day, but you can't see the wood through the trees because the kānuka is right there. Now, the manuka industry is well established, there's manuka oil, there's lots of health benefits that come out of that. And so we had a little bit, like, you know, literally what we found under the stone of private funding and we leveraged government funding to, through Callaghan Innovation to have a look at what opportunities were in kānuka. Now, not many people had done much, so we did a, um, a liter uh, literature review and found there was opportunity there. So, what we wanted to move away from was you take one cut of buying, sorry, growing something and sending it away, so full vertical integration. So, we, we wanted to have a look at what does it look like from owning IP to growing to processing to marketing to end product with a firm belief that we could do it back home that we have people that that want to come back home so that was the first one that we that we looked at since then we have projects um, that look at uh, native fungi uh, kanuka kina and 15 other native plants um, that we're that we're looking into now we're only three years young and we're literally there's a handful of people doing this so you can't do everything at the same time you have to do a number of things and create partnerships with people to be able to do that we have to develop the capacity we don't have that capacity at home we have to develop it and a lot of it comes through um, creating partnerships so we don't have um, many science labs in Ruatoria, although our um, PR would say that we've got a state-of-the-art um, facility in, in Ruatoria. Um, we recently had an investor that came up and said, we, can, are you going to take us to your company? Uh, any of you guys that know Ruatoria, there's a cafe called Hati Nati um, that's open sometimes, um, on some days, um, if you're lucky. And um, we're standing outside and it was, and it was last week and it was a cold southern. Are you going to take us to your company? It's like, uh, yeah, we're going to take you to one of our grow facilities. Oh, can we can we see your your company first? I said, um, we we've got a virtual company. Does, does that work? And so what we what what we've been able to do is we don't have that expertise back home. We have people with that expertise. We have something like eighty thousand Nati Pro that have skills in every industry. And most of them live away because during the urban drift, our nannies and our papas and our parents moved away to go to the cities to get money. And that's it's a reality for, for most Māori around the Mutu. So we have um, relationships. These aren't all of them, but these are a, a whole lot that we leverage off their skills to be doing um, the different projects that we're doing. Now, one of the things that we did early on was... Um, it's all good to have a look at opportunities, but our population in Ruatoria is the smallest it's ever been. Um, from, and this goes back, this will be the same for most people, places, rural places around the country, is that you used to have tens of thousands of people who used to live in our communities. I was talking to the taxi driver on the way there, he said, oh, so what's in your town? Have you got a dairy? He's like, yep, we've got one of those that's open sometimes. He said, Oh, have you, have you got any other shops? We've got a Foursquare, a Dairy, and um, oh, the cafe. 
get some time to open. Um, and so what we did is we did a, a, a survey out through our Nazi Pro Facebook page and asked our Fano how many wanted to come home. 50% of our Fano of our Fano wanted to move home. So we had 500 respondents within about 10 days, which is a reasonably good response. It have a bit of a bias because there's those ones that actually want to come home, but still that's 40,000. Take a little bias off, let's call it 20,000 people want to move back home. We asked them what their biggest barriers were. Jobs, housing, and whakawhanaumatanga. So in the economic development space, let's create some jobs. Through um, one of the things that we uh, that we really focus on is getting the best that we can afford and can't afford to do the mahi that we need because some of these things that we're doing, the thing, the thing, you know, Maui is one you know, in my um, in my mahi mahi I spoke of uh, Maui being an uri of Maui. Now Maui is known as being mischief. He's known as being a trickster. At our kohanga, on our marae, when any of the mukos play up, they get growled, but then they get celebrated for being an uri of Maui. <laughs> it's that whole thing of looking at things in a different way. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And so we need to look at things in a different way. And so there's a whole lot of cliches that go around um, that, around like that, like fail fast, and fail often, fail fast. Um, and so one of the things that we want to do is make little failures and make them often, and so we get the best expertise that we can. So from wherever in the motu it is, we get those who are skilled in that area to provide the knowledge that we need. Now, that's only a temporary thing. Now, temporary, you might think, oh, how long is temporary? One year, two years? It doesn't actually matter because we're here forever. We have that ability to do inter intergenerational stuff that we may not be able to have someone in microbiology for another half a generation, or we might not have um, someone in investment banking for another two generations, but it's coming. So we have that ability to do that. Can you go on to the next one, please? So, um, I'll try and go through this quite quickly, but we always get asked about this. We, need to set a, we needed to set up a structure that had that, inter, that intergeneration, inter, intergenerational ability, but also put whānau at the centre, because without our whānau, we don't have anything. It's oh, a bit weird. So, I'll just have to point to it. Up in the middle, we had Hikarangi Enterprises. That's our enabling tool. That's the thing that allows people to uh, explore opportunities and, and, and get into business and create these opportunities for them. We then um, were very lucky that Akina provided us some pro bono um, stuff to get some structuring stuff done through Russell McVeigh. And what they came up was with a structure that could be replicated. So we have Hikarangi Enterprises. We then have Fano, who want to get into business, who are in business but don't have the skills to either do it or be grow or be successful in it. What we then do is we form a limited partnership and we get our own community to invest in it. Now that's a biggie. We've just done that with our cannabis company, and from one of the poor, well, one of the poorest regions in the country, within five days we got 1.4 million dollars out of people from from people on the ground. Now, it's not about trying to get blood out of a stone, but what we've got is we've got this, we've got the support base across our whole rohe and a belief that we can do something. Now, most of these people have never invested in anything. Most, uh, a majority of these people are on benefits. Now, we had, we had one of our kuya who saved for 20 weeks so that she could get a handful of shares for each of her mokopuna. Now, these were... A number of these people, some of these kui, were people who never ever had anything to do with cannabis and didn't want anything to do with cannabis. It was quite a journey which I'll get to, to, to how we, to that pathway, but that gives the community a direct investment in making sure that these things work. It's not just a um, lip service to something. Our whānau genuinely want things that we're doing to work. 
Um, for, for our cannabis um, venture, um, we, need, um, we need about between 10 and 16 mil, so we're bringing in institutional investors. But our whānau always get the first opportunity to be there. That's the whānau first space. And then out of that, Hikurangi um, Cannabis was, company was, was born. Now, um, we'll play a little video that will give you guys a, um, a bit of an overview of, uh, of the cannabis before we get into it. At the outset, we weren't sure how it would turn out, but 